Want to know the latest in soccer? Then listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast from MLS, the World Cup, and the Premier League. We've got you covered. The latest updates, the hottest matches, and news on the league's top players. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast. David Beckham scores the goal. Listen now. Thank you for listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast, where we discuss all of the news in the world of soccer. My name is Ben. And my name is Alex. You are back after last week. We did not yep. get to have you join us on the yeah, show, but you are back. A car problems, but um, well, we're back. You know, we're good. We're good. And honestly, we have an action-packed show today. There's yeah, we do. There's more than... A Probably fair 50 share. billion things I want to put in the show, so we'll have to settle um, with like maybe 20 billion things. Yeah, okay, 20 billion things. I can I can hang with that. I think we That's have okay. time for that. Yeah. Okay, I think we'll make time. But we, as I mentioned, we have a zillion things we need to talk about. We're going to be talking about the Champions League. We had the Match Day 6 results from last week, as well as our Round of 16 pairings, which were revealed earlier this morning. A couple of really, really big time matchups as well as some others we'll talk about that and the group winners and second place finishers as well as who goes down to the europa league europa league draw was today as well for the round of 32 won't really cover that too much not too many big names but i mean you have manchester united in there you have tottenham in there you know so there's there's some other teams but Mm -hmm. in the round of 32 obviously they're gonna be matched up and then round of 16 will get a little more interesting so i think we'll start there but we'll obviously start with champions league Going to be talking about results from this past week in the world of soccer. We had the MLS Cup Final on Saturday. A big, big, big win for Seattle. Big, big, big. In regards to winning the MLS Cup, but a, a nil-nil score. I mean, not too, not too, not too many sexy. goals, but definitely their first MLS Cup in the history of their team. Mm-hmm. So we'll talk about that in the second segment, as well as some other results around a lot of Europe's top five leagues. We'll also preview... This upcoming week in soccer, Alex, in our third segment, we have midday games during the week. We have weekend games. It's it's a great time to be live as well. Also going on right now, we have the Ballon d'Or ceremony going on currently in France. They are revealing the players from 30 all the way to 1 with how the journalists vote. Right now, they're currently on about 14 was the last one I saw. So we'll wait till the end so we have more results, obviously. I don't think we'll have our Ballon d'Or winner by then, but we'll obviously do a preview, like a prediction of who we think it is. We know who it's going to be. I, th- I think we have a good idea on at least the top two, maybe a little bit farther than that. We also have World Eleven, which will be revealed later, so we'll probably miss out on that. We'll have to update next week. But anyways, start with Champions League. All right, let's start with Champions League. And, um, you know, Champions League had matchups pretty much all of last week. You had Tuesday and you had Wednesday, obviously. So, <clears throat> we look at Tuesday's matchups. We had Barcelona just handling Borussia Mönchengladbach 4-0. Man City and Celtic drawing 1-1. Benfica and Napoli 1-2 in favor of Napoli there. And we talked about handling. How about Dinamo Kiev over Besiktas? 6-0. We moved to PSG over, um, and actually Drew with Ludogorets at 2-2. Bayern Munich over Atletico Madrid 1-0. And FC Basel. Losing two, Arsenal four to one, and don't forget FC Rostov and PSV Eindhoven at nil nil draw. How about some big wins in that Tuesday matchup? You have Arsenal over uh, FC Basel four one, Barcelona over uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach four nil, and then six nil. Do you know what Kiev over Besiktas? That's that's some big wins. Definitely. So you look at Group A. You had Arsenal and PSG already go through to the round of sixteen. And then really the last matchup there would determine who would be the group winner and who would finish second. PSG at home against Little Goric, you would imagine they would have gotten a victory, but they barely even got a draw. Angel Di Maria needed to score in stoppage time to make that game 2-2. 
So they dropped the two points. So it's really big for Arsenal to get a victory in Switzerland over Basel. And they do. They get that 4-1 victory. You had a hat trick from Lucas Perez. So they go on as the group winners for Group A. And after looking at the round of 16 uh, draw earlier this morning, it's kind of unfortunate for Arsenal. But honestly, it could have been worse because yeah. PSG drew an even better team. We'll talk about that in the la- later part of the segment, so I don't want to spoil any fun. But mm-hmm. definitely Arsenal, their first group win in a few years. So yeah, it's well, really important that you get the group team. win because in the round of 16, you have that second leg at home. So you go to the second place team first. So if you can go there... Maybe get a decent result, get some away goals. You go home with a much bigger advantage. So that is really important that you win the group. You look at some of these other ones. You look at Group B. Group B was extremely tight between Napoli, Benfica, and Besiktas. They were separated by one point. Napoli do get the victory over Benfica, so they are absolutely through. But for me, the letdown of the whole entire day last week was Besiktas. If they simply beat Dinamo Kiev, they would have been through into the round of 16, and they go out, and they lose 6-0? Yeah, not only did they not win, they lost 6-0. to nil. They lose 6-0 mm-hmm. to the team with the worst finish in their group. Had two points going into the match, and with five, obviously. Mm-hmm. But Besiktas, a win, and they would have been in, and they go out, and they get absolutely trampled by Dinamo Kiev. So Napoli wins the group with the victory over Benfica, and then Benfica, kind of by default, goes on <laughs> to be... To finish second in that group, so definitely got a little bit of a benefit of the doubt there. Mm-hmm. And we look at Wednesday's matchups. We had f- we had actually six teams in this one that s- failed to score a goal. We had Tottenham over CSK, Moscow three to one. We had Porto in a big win over Leicester City, nonetheless five nil. One of the teams that failed to score a goal, Copenhagen over Club Bruges two nil. Another team, Club Bruges f- failing to score. Lyon and Sevilla both. A nil-nil draw. Bayer Leverkusen over Monaco, 3-nil. Ligia Vorsva over Sporting Lisbon, 1-nil. He had a 2-2 draw between Real Madrid and Borussia Dortmund, which is a, that's a big win for Dortmund there. And then Juventus over Dinamo Zagreb, 2-nil. So you had a decent amount of teams there failing to score a goal. Definitely. So Tottenham were already eliminated, but they do get the victory. They do, finish, they do finish as one of the top four third-place teams. So they go down to the Europa League. So I will see them on Thursdays. Happy to see that as an <laughs> Arsenal supporter. But some of the other results, Porto get a big 5-0 victory over Leicester. Leicester had already clinched the group. So they rested a lot of their players. That's something I talked about last week. I imagine they would have done. Porto, obviously, with a win, they would have been in into the round of 16. So they're going to be fighting hard. And they played extremely well. They went 5-0. No real surprises there. Copenhagen do get the 2-0 victory over Club Bruges, but they are eliminated because Porto obviously did win. You have the other big result is Real Madrid and Dortmund. This was a game that was going to decide who would be the group winner in this entire group. It's almost better in my eyes that Real Madrid kind of finished second because they would dodge a lot of the big boys, the, a lot of the group winners, a couple of them being Atletico Madrid, and Barcelona because they're in Spain. They can't play a team from Spain in the round of 16, and they can't play a team that's in the same group as them. So they could not play Spain. Mm -hmm. They could not play, I'm sorry, Atletico, Barcelona, or Dortmund. So that makes their chances to play one of the weaker group winners a lot easier. That's actually what happened, but we'll talk about that a little later. Juventus get the Tuna victory over Dinamo Zagreb, so they do win the group. Sevilla do go, do go on into the round of 16 as well with their nil no draw over Leon. Leon had to win that game in order to go on, so they are kind of eliminated. But Real Madrid, they did have a 2-0 two nil, two nil lead. Kareem Benzema with two goals, and then they gave it up. They Just like they did in Dortmund, they had a 2-1 victory, and they gave up a goal late this time to Marco Royce. So it's a 2-2 two two, two draw. Sorry, But Dortmund do go on as the winners. So now, Alex, when you look at our round of 16, Mm-hmm. We have Group A, obviously, Arsenal in first, PSG in second. Group B, Napoli in first, Benfica in second. Group C, Barcelona and Manchester City, who got the 1-1 draw against Celtic. They go on to finish second in Group C. Group D, you have Atletico Madrid, although they did lose to Bayern Munich in the last day. They do go on as group winners, and Bayern go in as a second-place finisher. Group E, Monaco, and then Bayer Leverkusen. Group F, like I said, Dortmund and Real Madrid. Group G, Leicester City and Porto, and then Group H... Juventus and Sevilla. It's a pretty, I mean, you should see the matchups between some of these teams. That's so, definitely. So cool. we'll really quickly go in to our round of 16 matchups. We don't want to preview them 
because we are going to wait. Mm-hmm. The first matchup is on Valentine's Day, February fourteenth. So maybe my maybe my heart won't won't uh, be broken by then because right now it, it will is. Be, sorry, right now it is. But we had our round of sixteen draw earlier this morning in the United States over about midday in Europe. So some of the matchups here we have PSG, the second place finishers from Group A. They will be going on to take on all powerful, mighty Barcelona. Yeah, tough pool for them. I would say just as tough as uh, Napoli drawing to face off against Real Madrid. Yes, Napoli as the group winners of B. I mentioned it's almost better if Real Madrid finished second. They're drawing Napoli, who are not an easy side, but definitely are not the best of the group winners. So they got a little benefit of the doubt there. Mm -hmm. Another matchup is Borussia Dortmund do go on to take on second place finisher in Group B, Benfica. So it's kind of weird. You have both teams from Group B taking on Real and Dortmund, mm-hmm. both teams from Group F. I thought that was kind of ironic. But anyway, some more of the matchups. Like I said, Arsenal, my heart's a little broken right now because they draw the German champions, Bayer Munich. Yep. This is the fourth time. I knew this was going to happen, okay? Let me explain. This was the fourth time in the last five years that Arsenal will play Bayer Munich in the Champions League. In 2013, Bayer Munich knocked Arsenal out of the round of 16. In 2014, Bayern Munich knock Arsenal out of the round of 16. I'm getting a, I'm getting a vibe here. I'm getting a last year thing here. Arsenal and Bayern Munich were in the same group. Mm-hmm. Arsenal win the game in London two nil. In in Germany, <laughs> Bayern win five one. So yeah. in in aggregate, Bayern win five to three. So they would have in theory knocked out Arsenal. Yes. And now this year, they are playing Arsenal yet again. So like I said, fourth time in five years. To be honest, though, this is a dream matchup as a neutral fan. Obviously, two of the powerhouses in world soccer. Mm-hmm. But if there's ever going to be a time that Arsenal are going to top Bayern, it's going to be this year. This Arsenal team is much better than it was in 2013, 2014, and even last year when they met in the group stage. It's much better. Mm. And Arsenal do have the benefit of playing that second leg at the Emirates Stadium in England. If they can go to Germany... Get a decent result. Obviously not fall behind like 5-1 like they did last year. If they can get a decent result, maybe get a couple of away goals, then they have the edge going back home. Obviously, they won last year 2-0 in England, so they do have a little bit of an edge, that aspect. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, they are playing Bayern, who are probably in everyone's top three clubs in the world, which is definitely not a tough thing, and... It kind of sucks. And I knew that Arsenal would draw a tough team. It was either them or Real Madrid in my eyes. And, well, yeah, they drew. It was bad or worse. But anyway, some of the other matchups, I think this could be a good matchup as Bayer Leverkusen will take on Atletico Madrid. Manchester City will take on the top scoring team in all of Europe, which is Monaco. Porto will battle Juventus. Sevilla will battle the English champions Leicester. So those are your round of 16 matchups. As we said, the... First leg of the round of 16 gets kicked off on Tuesday, February 14th. So, obviously, on that Monday, the 13th, we'll have to preview those games. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have a couple of months off now between Champions League. So, you have more league games going on midweek as well as you have league cups coming up. So, a little break from the Champions League, which sucks, but (laughs) it's okay. You know, that ties into a little break that we're going to take. There. Oh, I love that transition. That was beautiful. Thanks. So, we're going to take our first break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk this weekend in the world of football. Just a moment here at the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
And we are back at the Golden State Media Concept Soccer Podcast. Really quick breaking news. Leicester City winger Riyad Mahrez has just won the African Footballer of the Year, obviously being from Algeria. It was between him and really Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. They were the top two vocators. But Riyad Mahrez does win the award. Do you think he deserved it, Alex? Yeah, you know, he played very well this year. There's a lot of guys that were really, you know, honestly worth it. But it'll depend on really how, what, what they go about in the aspect of, you know, criteria. But, no, I, th- I think we're I – th- I think he, he deserved it. Yeah. You know, like I said, really between he and Obama Yang, I think mm-hmm. Mares deserved it for what he did, not only in England, which is, a, in my opinion, a much tougher league than the Bundesliga is, no disrespect, but also what he accomplished with Leicester City, just – Unlike anything we will ever see again, unless RB Leipzig continue the streak they're on. But yeah, but we're actually going to get into a little bit of news from them here in a minute. Yeah, didn't uh, necessarily have the uh, successful weekend that they, like they have in the past. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but let's start in the Premier League, yes? Okay, let's do it. All right, so starting, we had games on Saturday. We had games on Sunday. No games on Monday to speak of. So we're going to get to the weekend. We had on Saturday, Watford over Everton. 3-2. Swansea City over Sunderland, 3-0. Burnley FC over Bournemouth, 3-2. Benjamin's Arsenal over Stoke City, 3-1. Hull City and Crystal Palace do draw at 3-3. And Leicester City gets a big win over Man City, at least in the Premier League, even though they've been lighting up over there in the Champions League. A big Premier League win over Man City, 4-2. Definitely, that's the biggest Victory, in my eyes, of the whole entire weekend. Mm -hmm. You look at Manchester City still trying to compete in that top four, challenge Chelsea and Arsenal, and really Liverpool sit above them now. Just not a good result. Jamie Vardy with a hat trick. The Vardy party is back on at the King Power Stadium. As I mentioned, Vardy with a hat trick. Leicester went up 2-0 within five minutes. They were up 3-0 within 20 minutes. And then, honestly, Vardy gets the hat trick from a gift from John Stones. Christmas done come early. John Stones to Jamie Vardy. And then you had City get a couple of goals late to try and make it, I guess, at least a little respectable. But for me, they got lit up all up and down the pitch. They were without Sergio Aguero, who's on a three-game ban. Now it's two. Without Fernandinho, who was on a four-game ban. Now it's it's three. Yes. And then they were without Nicolas Otamendi, who had picked up his fifth yellow card in the game last week against Chelsea. So really, they were without their spine, their top center back. Their top midfielder, although they have a ton of midfielders, Fernandinho Mm -hmm. has been playing lights out this year and has played like their best midfielder. And then without Aguero, who is the best striker, not only in the team, but in my opinion, the league. So they're they're without their spine there, and that really, really hurt them. Mm -hmm. And honestly, they lose 4-2. A tough December coming up. A game next Sunday against Arsenal. Again, without Fernandinho and Aguero. It's going to be tough. They drop those points and a huge, huge victory for Leicester as they are near the bottom of the table. They do jump up a little bit. They jump up to 14th, now with 16 points through 15 games, and they're trying to avoid getting relegated. You okay there, buddy? Sorry, I hit the microphone. That's okay. But uh, And then the other big w- victory of Saturday is, in my opinion, Swansea City over Sunderland. You had a couple of goals from Fernando Llorente. Swansea City, who were in last place coming into the weekend, jump up to 18th. So they're still in the relegation zone. But they do gain points over Sunderland, who is trying to fight as well. And they're in last place now. So that's a big result for Swansea. If they're going to try and jump out of the relegation battle, they need to get as many points as they can. Yeah, because so, they're sitting in the, right in the pack of it. Really good result. We look at Sunday. We had a little less. We only had four games in that one. Chelsea defeats West Brom 1-0. Southampton over Middlesbrough 1-0. Man United over Tottenham 1-0. And Liverpool and West Ham draw 2-2. Big result here for Chelsea. They win their ninth straight. The goal from Diego Costa now with 12 12 goals. He is atop the Premier League Golden Boot chase with 12 goals, as I mentioned. I mean, I don't know what else to say about Chelsea. They are the hottest team in all of Europe right now. Nine straight victories. Within those nine games, they've outscored opponents 23-2. to So ever changing to that 3-4-3, they have been absolutely lights out. Mm -hmm. Costa gets a nice goal yesterday. They're, They're flying high right now. Then you look at Man United and Tottenham, probably the best matchup of the weekend on paper. United at Old Trafford had drawn their last four out of their last five games, so they weren't getting any positive results. Well, they got one yesterday. A first-half goal from Henrik Mkhitaryan, the outcast near the beginning of the year. He scored a goal in the Europa League last week. He gets a start on Sunday against Tottenham. Gets a very nice goal. He played extremely well. A big three points for United. 
Tottenham now their second loss in three games when they hadn't even lost even before that. So three points drop for Tottenham. And you look at Liverpool, 2-2 two, two draw against a disappointment this year in West Ham. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely stunning free kick from Dimitri Payet in the first half. And then Liverpool tied up right after the halftime break. So they dropped two points, and now they sit third in the table, just one point in their last couple of games after they were flying so high even before that. Yeah, it, it's a tough loss for Liverpool. definitely is. Um, but a lot, a lot of tough losses and big wins this week for uh, a lot of teams. You know, Man City dropped a big one to Leicester City, who weren't having a great Premier League this year, but they were having you know a good international year. So a lot of interesting wins and losses as we get down to it in uh, Week 15. Definitely. Uh, one of them I look at is Watford over Everton. Watford now 7th in the Premier League with 21 points. Everton, just one win in their last 10 games in all comps. They just aren't playing well right now. And then tomorrow they have a game midweek. It doesn't get any easier. They're playing Arsenal, who have not lost since opening day to Liverpool. So Everton need to find a way to get a positive result tomorrow at Goodison Park against the team from North London. But now you look at the rest of the Premier League table. Obviously, Chelsea, they're flying high. They got a three-point lead over Arsenal, who sits second. Liverpool with 31 points, three behind Arsenal and six behind Chelsea. Then you have Manchester City with back-to-back losses. They're still at 30 points through 15 game, which is not bad, but they are seven points off the top. Tottenham had a chance to go ahead of City with a victory over United yesterday, but they blew that chance. So they sit fifth with 27, and you have United with that victory at 24 points. I mentioned Watford at seventh with 21. West Brom, Everton, and Southampton, eight, nine, and 10, all with 20. All right. And it's getting down to it. And I'm, I'm enjoying watching the table, especially because it's a little, a little swift changes. Anyways, let's look at the Bundesliga. We had Friday, Saturday, and Sunday matchups in the Bundesliga. On Friday, we had Eintracht and Hoffenheim drawing nil-nil. We had Bayern Munich, big 5-0 over Wolfsburg. We had SC Freiburg 1-0 over Darmstadt. We had a draw between FC Cologne and Dortmund. Bruce Dortmund, 1-1. They draw that one. Uh, Werder Bremen defeats Hertha BSC 1-0. And Amberg over FC Augsburg 1-0. But the biggest... Match of the Saturday games is Ingolstadt with the one nil win over Red Bull Leipzig. Definitely Leipzig. They had won nine consecutive games in a row in the Bundesliga. They were atop of the table. They do get that one nil loss to the team that was in last place in the Bundesliga in Ingolstadt. They do jump ahead now. Darmstadt do fall to number eighteen spot, which is the last. But Ingolstadt, even with their victory, only second win of the season. And they've only scored 11 goals. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. definitely not a good situation. But they do get the one very important goal, and that is the victory over Red Bull Leipzig. They are now defeated in the Bundesliga, their first loss of the season. Bayern Munich with the big 5-0 victory. Robert Lewandowski with a hat trick against Wolfsburg, who are playing literally terrible. There's kind of some turmoil going on, especially with Julian Draxler. I think it's almost a guarantee that he gets sold next month in January. He's getting booed by the He's fans. Sold. He's getting booed by the fans. The president of the club said that he would not be playing for them anymore. He's not going to even appear for the squad. So they might as well sell him for something. He's a prized, prized piece in Europe and part of that German national team. And such a young age, too, only 24 years old. So you imagine he'll probably be leaving in January. They're just kind of in disarray right now. 15th, 10 points through 14 games. But as you mentioned, Leipzig lose, Bayern Munich big victory. They now jump atop of the Bundesliga, which they are so accustomed to doing every year. Yes. Joint joint top with Leipzig on points, but ahead on goal differential by five. Yeah, I mean they're they're, they're used to being up there. It's just a matter of time. You and I said it. You know, as good as Red Bull Leipzig's been playing, you know, there's a difference between being a good team this year and being the team that's always at the top. They know how to be there. Definitely. And then for me, the dis- the disappointment is Hoffenheim. They get a nil nil draw against Eintracht. Eintracht, definitely a good team. They're joint with Hoffenheim at 26 mm-hmm. points. But Hoffenheim, just that team that just can't get victories. You know they're still unbeaten through 14 games in the Bundesliga, but they have eight draws, only six victories, continue to drop two points week after week after week. It comes back to haunt you, and that's what what's going on right now. They're seven points back of Leipzig and Bayern. Mm, yeah, it's going to be hard for them to make up room, obviously, with how good both of those teams have been playing all year. And then you look at Dortmund, sixth place still, twenty five points, eight off the top. Mm-hmm. I think they're I think they're done as far yeah. as competing. But there is still Champions League spots involved, so they can get top three, top four, just a couple of points off that. So that, I think they'll be okay. They need to turn it around. Cologne's not a terrible team. They sit seventh with twenty three points. So a one one draw is not a terrible result. Although mm-hmm. Dortmund are going to be unhappy. They're definitely a much better side. 
Very true. All right, and Sunday we had matchups. So yesterday we had Bruja Mönchengladbach defeating Mainz 1-0 and Bayer Leverkusen over Schalke 1-0 as well. Just a couple of one nilers right there. That's, Not a yeah, huge I game, mean, but just how it works. All you need is one sometimes. All you need is one. All it's you need all is takes. more than the other team. All right, let's look at La Liga. We move into this week, and we had Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we have a game today as well, Ben. A huge week in the La Liga match day. So we look at Friday. We had Malaga over Granada. As a matter of fact, they drew 1-1. So a tight game there for them. Saturday was the kind of the like, – there's not really a big day. There was, oh, there was four mix. games on each on each weekend day. So uh, Osasuna lose to Barcelona big 3-0. Big surprise there. Real Sociedad over Valencia 3-2. Las Palmas and Legain's 1-1 draw. Deportivo, of course, fall to Real Madrid 3-2, but it's a little closer than most people thought it would be, in my eyes at least. You know, I didn't expect him to hang in with it that long. We had a, a draw, a nil-nil draw between Ibar and Alavis. We had Sevilla over Celta Vigo 3-0. Espanyol over Sporting Lisbon 2-1. And Real Batiste over Atletico Bilba 1-0, as a matter of fact. And then later on today, we have actually in about... About a little over an hour. Hour and a half. Yeah. We have Atletico Madrid and Villarreal taking, a, uh, taking on one another in La Liga. Big big result for Barcelona over Osasuna. Lionel Messi with a couple of goals. Just played absolutely fantastic. Probably the best player on the pitch. Definitely the man of the match. And then Real Madrid against Deportivo La Coruña. They get a 3-2 victory. So you're like, oh, okay, maybe it was a little close. Not so much. Madrid get a goal from Alvaro Morata in the 52nd minute. But then they give up two goals in a matter of minutes. They go down 2-1 at home at the Bernabeu against Deportivo, who are not one of the better teams in La Liga. Not but really. Real Madrid get two goals within the last eight minutes of the game. And it's that man yet again, Alex. Just like it was last week against Barcelona. Just like it is always. We have death, like. taxes, and Sergio Ramos is going to score a header in extra time. And that's exactly what happened. They get the Sergio Ramos goal. To give them a 3-2 victory. And they stay unbeaten in La Liga. And they stay with a six-point lead over mm -hmm. Barcelona. It's a big win for them, honestly. It's a huge, huge win. They were in danger of dropping their first game all year long. But definitely did not happen. Sevilla get a huge 3-0 victory. So now they only move one point behind Barca. Technically still in consideration. And then you mentioned today, Atletico Madrid and Villarreal. Definitely the matchup of the weekend in my eyes. Five and six, respectively, in La Liga. 25 points, 23 for Villarreal. If Atleti do win, they will jump up to fourth over Real Sociedad. If Villarreal do win, they will go up to fourth as well. Yeah, Villarreal is having a pretty solid year, but uh, I got to give it to Atleti Madrid, I think. Definitely. I, I, I kind of feel bad that Atleti have a game today because Antoine Griezmann, who is a finalist, for the Ballon d'Or, cannot mm -hmm. be present. Obviously, he has to play the game. So, yeah. and it's in his home country of France. So, yeah, kind of a bad know, for him, He'll be happy if he wins, and he'll also, I don't think, I don't he's think he gonna, will. But, but we'll we'll talk about that in the third second. Regardless, all right, let's keep moving. We had Serie A matchups this weekend as well. We're going to start on Saturday. We had Sunday, and we're going to have a game to actually. We have two games taking place today. Fun fact. So we'll start with Saturday. We only had two games. We had Crotone and Pescara. Croton takes that one 2 1. And then we had Lazio and Sampadoria. Lazio takes that one 2 1 as well. Now, excuse me, this was a weekend full of big wins in all over all over the world. We had Napoli with a 5 0 win over Cagliari. We had Chivo with a 2 0 win over Palmero. Bologna and Empoli do draw 0 0. Udinese and Atalanta 3 1 in favor of Udinese there. Juventus with a 3 1 win over Torino. And Inter Milan with a 2-0 win over Genoa. And then we look at today, we have Fiorentina oh, and uh, Sassoluo. They are facing off against one another. Yes, Fiorentina with a 1-0 lead in the 11th. So. And then, oh, so that game did start. I did, thank you for updating on that. And then we have Roma and AC Milan taking on one another just in about, just, just under about two hours now, about an hour and are in 40 minutes, roughly, so taking on one another later in the day. Definitely the matchup of the weekend in Serie A, Roma and Milan, second and third, respectively, in Serie A. With Juventus winning, they currently have a seven-point lead, but they do have a game in hand over both these clubs. So if one of them, either Roma or Milan, do get a victory, it'll be down to four. So they're still in striking distance, although Juve 
definitely still the much better side. It's kind of weird because Juventus are the only team in Serie A to not have a draw so far this year. They either win with 13 or they lose with three. So Mm -hmm. kind of interesting there, but they do get the victory over Torino, as you mentioned, a 3-1 victory. Just not a good not a good day for Torino. No, yeah, it's a tough loss at any time, you you know. But at that rate, you know, three one against a good Juventus team, yeah, I, not good. Not as bad as a Cagliari they had, but you know. I mean, everyone bad. has their days. So. Everybody has their day, and their days showed up. All right, and last but not least, we look at League One in France. We had uh, a game on Friday that was actually postponed between Marseille, um, Marseille and Dijon. They actually moved to uh, Saturday, in which that one was won by Marseille 2-1. Monaco defeats Bordeaux 4-0. We had another postponed game that actually hasn't been played yet. It hasn't been made up yet, and that was between Keynes and Nantes. Uh, Bastia defeats Metz 2-0. Lille defeats Montpellier 2-1. And Lorient loses to Toulouse 3-2. Now, the last game on Saturday's match, that was their big day, was Nancy Lorraine 2-0 over Angers. And then we moved to Sunday. We had two matchups, three matchups, as a matter of fact. PSG and Nice drew 2-2. Lyon over Rennes 1-0. And I'm sorry, Ben, I'm not familiar with this team. I don't know if that's their name or if that's their abbreviation, but... A-S-S-E. Yeah, saint Etienne's their abbreviation. They got the one the victory over Jean Gomp. Yeah, Jean Gomp, yeah. So the big result for me, Monaco 4-0. They continue their hot, impressive form. I mentioned in the Champions League segment, top scorers in all of Europe. You had a hat trick from the Colombian striker Radamel Falcao, literally resurrecting his career out in France after a couple of disappointing spells with Manchester United and Chelsea the last couple of years in the Premier League. I don't know what it is. Maybe he struggled with the league competition, but he's been lights out and fantastic back in France for Monaco. I mentioned the hat trick. So with the victory, and then Nice get a draw over PSG. So they do stay top, do Nice, but only by one point over Monaco, who are 30, 39 points in second. And then PSG are four points back of Nice with their draw with 36 points. PSG just not really continuing that dominant form that they showed last year and the, really the years before that in League One. And really quickly, Alex, we'll talk about the MLS Cup final. It was on Saturday. It was in Toronto. It had Toronto FC hosting the Seattle Sounders. And Alex, I mean, if you're a fan of just high-scoring games and shootouts and exciting then games... this one was... Then this one was not necessarily no, the thing for you. Not it. In 120 minutes, Seattle doesn't even register a shot on goal. Toronto do have seven, so they, they had some chances, but absolutely... Fantastic goalkeeping by Stefan Fry. Seattle wins it in penalty kicks 5-4. to four. Fry is your MLS Cup MVP. Fantastic clean sheet. Fantastic performance. He had one save on a header going to his left that I still don't know how he got to in time. But he somehow managed to. And he was literally the reason they won that game. They win it in penalties 5-4 to four. on the road in Toronto against a top-scoring team like Toronto FC is with mm-hmm. Giovinco and Josie Altador and Michael Bradley. I'm surprised that Seattle came away with the victory. I thought Toronto would win, but, I mean, anything I can ca- happen when it goes to PKs. Yeah, I, I, ca- I called it personally, so in your face, but, uh, yeah, I thought they would too. And now you mentioned real quick before we take our last break, the obviously the MLS Cup. Uh, how about a winner of two MLS Cups and uh, three United States Open Cup titles? And that is... Paulo Nagamura, who's retiring from professional soccer after spending 12 years in the MLS, where he won those championships. He started 240 of 269 games. He played in the MLS with 15 goals and 21 assists, most recently playing for Sporting Kansas City this season, scoring seven goals in 119 appearances. He also played for the Galaxy at one point, Chivas, and Toronto FC. Definitely one of the more durable guys in all of world soccer in the MLS, so he will be missed, but a great, great career. Very much so. All right, let's take that last break and come back, and we will talk Ballon d'Or. Ben can't wait. So we'll do that, and we'll be right back here at the Gonzalo Media Concepts Soccer Podcast. 
Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. And we're back here at the Golden State Media Concept Soccer Podcast. I'm going to throw it over to Ben because he is going to open up the next segment for us. Benjamin, when you're ready. I am ready. So we're obviously talking some Ballon d'Or. The ceremony is currently going on over in France right now. So of the 30 finalists, 11 of the vote getters did not receive a vote for top player. So we will just be sort of counting down what we have revealed so far. So a few people are tied at 16. First of them, you have Robert Lewandowski, the Polish striker who also plays for Bayer, Bayer Munich. Oh, just, there it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Just a fantastic, fantastic year. Some of those German names you can really get caught up on. Like I, I didn't get my, caught up. Well, I'm saying kinda... my dad's full German. Sometimes I go like, Bleh. you know, it's, it's hard to get him out of your mouth sometimes. It doesn't sound right. He's a fantastic player. He's uh, got over 200 career goals for clubs. So mm-hmm. just, a, just a fantastic player. Had a hat trick on Saturday, as I mentioned. Scored midweek, a fantastic free kick against Let's Go Madrid. So definitely worthy of a good vote. At number 14, you have France's own, as well as Manchester United, and last year, part of Juve, Paul Pogba, the yes, midfielder, always dominating it and bossing it. As well as him, you have Arturo Vidal, the Chilean midfielder who plays for Bayern Munich, so our second Bayern Munich player on the list. And now at number 13, you have our second Manchester United player on the list, and that's the Swedish legend Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Kind of a surprise for me at 13. I'm kind of a little... I think that's a little too high maybe for Almighty Zlatan, which he'll probably come help me down and kill me for saying that. But <laughs> With his ponytail. I think a little high for Zlatan, but some others. We have Dimitri Payet in at 17. And then just up, put up here at number 12 is Sporting Lisbon goalkeeper and Portuguese international Rui Patricio. Uh, definitely a little high for me. Number 12 for Patricio. I think it has to do a lot with his results in the in the European Championships for Portugal, obviously winning it. But, I mean, if he's finishing at 12, then that tells me I already know who's going to win number one. And it's the guy I thought because it's his fellow Portuguese international, mm-hmm. Ronaldo. And then just in right now, number 11, you have Gabon striker and Borussia Dortmund striker, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Fantastic, fantastic year in at number 11 is Aubameyang. Yeah, it's a good list. It's a weird list because I've told you before, there's already a weird setup list. There's so many people. And the weirdest thing above all, is they don't just announce a winner. They have a countdown. I like that, though. Mm. You're not a fan? It's just weird. They usually just announce. I kind of like that winner, because you, know? you can see where people are voting from 30 all the way to 1. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the show, we'll obviously update you. We might have a one or two more in by then. And then we'll obviously do a prediction for winner this year at the end of the show. But anyways, we got to talk some previews, man. Yeah, let's do it. After you, my friend. All right, so we'll start with the Premier League as we always do. Kind of... Uh, a little uh, fortunate this week of the Premier League with the Champions League done and over with for a couple of months. We have match day 16 is actually midweek tomorrow yeah. as well as Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And then we have match day 17 on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, that's weird. So I, like I kind of like that. We have two match days within the, the week. Well, if you want. You want to go 16, I'll do 17. All right. So for 16, we have Bournemouth battling Leicester City on Tuesday. And the other game on Tuesday tomorrow is Everton and Arsenal. I mentioned Everton. Going to be playing at Goodison Park tomorrow against the second-place team right now, Arsenal. And then Wednesday is kind of the juicy day. You have Middlesbrough against Liverpool. You have West Ham against Burnley. You have Sunderland against Chelsea. Manchester City look to put that loss behind them on Saturday against Leicester against an impressive team right now, Watford. West Brom will be battling Swansea City. Stoke will be battling Southampton. Crystal Palace will take on Manchester United. And Tottenham will lock with Hull City. And then we look at the Week 17 of matchups, we have Saturday, we have Sunday, we have Monday. Starting on the 17th, we have Crystal Palace and Chelsea, Middlesbrough and Swansea City, Stoke City and Leicester City, Battle of the Cities there, Sunderland and Watford, West Ham and Hull City and West Brom and Manchester United. On Sunday, we look at Bournemouth and Southampton, Man City and Arsenal. Ben, I know you're taking a good, a good long look at that one on Sunday. 
8 a.m. game. You don't have to wake up way early. I don't. I'm kind of uh, get to sleep in a little bit. Yeah. And then Tottenham and Burnley FC. And then a week from today, we have Everton. I'm sorry. Week. Yeah, a week from today, we have Everton and Liverpool. We have the first Merseyside Derby of the meeting on Monday. Can't wait for that one. Definitely going to be some fireworks there. Week 16, not too much to talk about. Kind of uh, not too many juicy, juicy matchups. I think Everton and Arsenal are probably the best one. Then you look to week 17, features Arsenal as well against Manchester City. Game is going to be at the Etihad Stadium in Manchester. Going to be a very important game for both teams. Chelsea looks to continue their winning ways. They could be on an 11-game winning streak by the time we talk next week. I mean, Mm -hmm. just riding high. I don't think anyone can stop them right now, buddy. I really don't. You know, the way they're playing, I, I think I agree with you on that one. I mean, it's it's going to be Go interesting ahead. to see, but obviously someone will stop them. They're not going to win. No, they're not going to win out. For the rest of the year. I mean, yeah. come on. And you look at week 17, you have good matchups, whether it's Man City and Arsenal. You have, you know, Crystal Palace playing Chelsea, uh, uh, Liverpool and Everton. I, I Obviously, I'll be looking at Man City and Arsenal a little bit, but also West Brom and Man United, a game that I don't have to wake up early at all for. 9.30, I mean, kind of in that... Saturday night football primetime special over in Europe, but mm-hmm. obviously 9 during the morning for us, so mm-hmm. not a bad look. So now you look over to the Bundesliga week 15, Friday, Saturday, and a couple of games Sunday. So Friday, Hoffenheim and Dortmund, definitely a great game. Hoffenheim could be suffering their first defeat of the, of the season against Dortmund, a really good team. You have Leipzig, look to continue their impressive form, but they're battling Hertha Berlin, who are in third right now, so they could be in trouble of dropping their second straight game and their second game in the whole entire league. You have Werder Bremen against FC Cologne. Schalke will be battling Freiburg. Mainz will take on Hamburg. FC Osberg against Borussia Mönchengladbach. You have Wolfsburg against Eintracht. And then Sunday, you have Darmstadt against Bayern. Got to expect Bayern to handle the team that's in last place right now. Yes, sir. And then Bayer Leverkusen will take on Ingolstadt. Yeah, that's going to be a good week. Um, Obviously, I'm looking at the Bayern Munich game because I love Bayern Munich. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach, that'll be a good game. We'll see if... Red Bull Leipzig can bounce back from their loss against uh, Hertha BSC on this one. That's going to be interesting to see how they bounce back from that. Uh, I I fully expect them to win that one, personally. Uh, But, you know, definitely just... And and Bayer Leverkusen and Ingolstadt. That'll be a good game also. But, you know me. Sunday has got my attention. Definitely agree. And then real quick, we'll look at La Liga. So you look at La Liga games Friday. You have Alaves and Real Betis. Saturday, you have Sporting Guion against Villarreal. Atletico Madrid will take on Las Palmas. Granada will battle Real Sociedad. Sevilla will take on Malaga. On Sunday, you have Laganas against Ibar. Deportivo La Coruña against Osasuna. Barcelona will lock up with Espanyol. And then Monday, you have Atletico Bilbao taking on Celta Vigo. That's a good, another good week. We're Definitely. Just, we're spoiled this week with, with soccer. Yeah, Real Madrid off week 16, obviously having to deal with the club World Cup. Mm-hmm. So they will not be playing in week 16. So they will have a game in hand, which I think in a way might be able to work in their favor. Obviously, if Barcelona can maybe drop some points without Real not playing their game and then still having, at worst, they're going to have a three-point lead. I think that'll give them a little bit of an edge mm-hmm. as we go on before they catch up that game. So could be a little interesting, but we'll have to wait and see exactly what goes on. All right, Alex, so real quickly, let's end the show with Ballon Dior predictions. We can't talk about it. it we can't not talk about it is what I meant to say. <laughs> Going on right now, who's your winner, who's your second-place finisher, and who's your third-place finisher? Uh, I got to give it to Ronaldo. He's my winner. Got to give it to Messi as my number two. And, you know, number three is really a toss-up. You know, who personally, who do you have in your your one, twos, and threes? I mean... Ronaldo's going to win it. There's yeah. not a doubt in my mind. What he accomplished with Real this year, over 50-plus goals, wins the Champions League, mm-hmm. wins the European Championship with Portugal, although he did get injured in the final, so he was not literally the sole reason they won the game. He didn't even only had a one touch, so didn't really do much. But anyways, he's going to win it. There's no doubt in my mind. Either Messi or Ronaldo has won the Ballon d'Or since 2007. Yeah. And, and then you, then you got to give it the other guy. Exactly. So number two, I have Lionel Messi, what he accomplished with Barcelona. Like I said, 50-plus goals as well. Wins La Liga with Barca. Another great year. And then third, I'm going to go with Griezmann. I was going to say, you have Griezmann in the three spot? Yeah. Uh, that sounds pretty pretty likely to me. Uh, Anton Griezmann's been playing amazing this year. It only makes sense. It's I mean, it's going to be hard to pass those two guys. But, I mean, it, honestly, you look at all the I mean, you have somebody like Pierre-Emerick... Obama Yang in the 11th spot, you know, that's somebody that good 
and I mean, obviously there's a different difference between the top two that we just talked about and those guys in terms of good. But I mean, everybody on this list is good. Definitely. I would go with Griezmann number three. I think what he accomplished with France and Atletico Madrid are basically second to only Ronaldo because he did finish second in both those games. So I kind of feel bad for him. He loses out to Cristiano Ronaldo and really Pepe, I guess you could say, yeah. in both of these games. Second place finish with France in the Euros and as well as a second place finish with Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. Another great year for Griezmann, so I'll say he goes third. And then fourth, I think this could be kind of interesting. I, I would give Gareth Bale probably number four. What he did okay. with what he did with Real, another good solid year. And then he accomplished a lot with Wales in the European Championships. It's unfortunate how they got bounced out with Aaron Ramsey having to miss the game. He was probably their player of the tournament in my eyes. Mm. But I would give number four Gareth Bale, the Welsh winger. You can't argue with that. I mean I can't. You know better than you know more than me. I'd hope you wouldn't. You know, so. I, I, I never. I never. But you know, that does it for us on this one. Of course, we will obviously talk to you guys about the outcome of this on Monday, but it's probably gonna be what we just said. You know, we're we're kind of we're kind of just that good. But until then we take our week long break in which we'll be back to talk more football more than you can even handle. So until then, we like to say thank you so much for listening to the Gold State Media Concept Soccer Podcast. I am Alex. My name is Ben. We'll see you guys next week. You enjoyed this jam-packed week and weekend of soccer, and we'll talk to you all about it again on Monday. You have a good one, guys. See you then. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program